This keyboard has a modular slot, which allows you to switch between a TFT screen and a knob, depending on your preference, and it's only $70. This kind of flexibility adds a layer of personalization to how you use your keyboard. This is the Vibe 75 from Mechland, featuring a 75% layout and a tri-mode connectivity, making it versatile for both wired and wireless use. It comes with a 4000mAh battery pack, giving you enough power for extended wireless sessions. The build combines plastic and anodized aluminum housing with a gasket structure. However, However, the gasket action isn't very noticeable, which I'll explore more thoroughly in the teardown section of this video. Switchwise, the Vibe 75 is equipped with the Mechland's Cream Mint Twitches, offering a smooth typing experience with a light 45 gram operating force. Plus, they're pre lubed. These are paired with a south facing Universal Hot Swap PCB, giving you the freedom to easily swap switches if you want to customize the feel and sound further. Inside the box, you'll find the essentials a manual, cable, keycap switch puller, and an extra knob. The build is primarily plastic but features a layer of anodized aluminum around the edges adding a touch of a premium feel. Weighing around 900 grams, the keyboard has a substantial weight for overall stability on your desk and comfort on your lap. As for the modular knob made of aluminum, it's worth mentioning that it's incredibly easy to pull that out and snap it back in. The same goes for the TFT screen, making switching between both a breeze. However, after swapping, you'll need to restart the keyboard to refresh the function of the modular slot. Fortunately, this is easily done with a power switch located at the top of the keyboard alongside the layout switch and USB-C input. The USB-C port is conveniently positioned in the middle of the keyboard keeping cable management simple. Underneath there are rubber pads and two level kick up feet for added comfort plus you get a slot for storing the wireless dongle. Overall the Vibe 75 brings solid build quality and customization options to the table especially with the modular slot making it a strong contender in the $70 range. But how about its software? So here here I have the software open and uh, I have the keyboard connected wired because that's how we are going to be able to change the TFT screen here. But uh, anyways, now to the left hand side, you've got yourself some configurations that you can export and import. You've got key binding settings right here and one function layer. Now moving on to macros, I don't have any complaints about macros. It's basically complete with mouse inputs that you could insert. Here you've got your RGB functions and it's pretty much self-explanatory. As for the TFT screen, down here you may import a static image or a GIF. And let me do that real quick. All right, so I have here a Deadpool GIF. So once you have that imported, just click on upload to keyboard down here. And now that's done. Here you will have more RGB settings that I don't use, but you're free to, of course, explore that yourself. And some more keyboard settings here, such as sleep time, delay settings, language, and other more functions. This keyboard is available in two color options, a blue theme and a gray theme, each featuring a tricolor mix. It's great to see both a more masculine and a more feminine option, allowing users to pick one that fits their personal style, with the ability, of course, to swap between a TFT screen and a knob based on your needs. Personally, I find the knob perfect for straight up volume control, while the screen is great for displaying information like time and battery life. As for RGB, it's vibrant enough to my eyes. There are plenty of RGB modes to choose from in the software. You can also cycle through them by pressing function key and backspace. Alternatively, you can control RGB settings via the TFT screen by using the function key and arrow keys. The screen offers even more control, letting you tweak LED color, brightness, speed, and volume, making it highly customizable right out of the box. The Vibe 75 comes with Cherry Profile Double Shot PBT keycap which are durable and resistant to shine. Stabilizers are evenly lubed and not too much was used on some of the stabbed keys. And still, I did not notice any rattling during use. For those who prefer an even smoother experience, you might want to add a bit more lube to the stab elbows. But no need for that on the spacebar stabs. They're tightly placed on the plate though, contributing to its overall stability. The keyboard is equipped with pre-lubricated Mechland's cream mint switches which have a 45 gram operating force. While I'm not certain about the exact materials used, used in these switches, the combination of materials in this build produces a deeper thock sound compared to other popular switches like the Leobog Greywood. If you're someone who enjoys a deeper stock typing sound, this keyboard definitely delivers in that area. Anyways, let's go over the teardown here. To start off, I don't recommend that you tear this keyboard down. I damaged three parts of this keyboard already and I'm gonna show that to you later on. The first thing I did is remove the hex screws and then detached this aluminum piece by pulling it from the side and then unwrapping it 
Just that way. But that's wrong. Because little did I know, this aluminum piece is held down by these screws right there. So those screws were once attached to this aluminum piece with super glue. And now it's been detached. So upon removing those hex screws, you're gonna have to remove these clip. One clip right there and another right here. Same goes for the other side. Up top, there's a clip right here. There, there's another right here. There's one more clip right there another here so there's a total of four clips at the bottom case at the top area of the keyboard now going over the bottom of the keyboard here i thought the clips were at the bottom case little did i know they were on the top case so there's a total of two clips on the top case there's one right there and another right here that no longer exists because i broke it so that's damage number one damage number two is this clip lock pulled it out again i didn't know that the clips weren't there so i just pulled it off and i broke that one let's go over internals and dampers here right underneath you get a silicone bottom pad and then as a damper for the pcb that also acts like somewhat like a tape mod is epdm foam now this is stuck underneath with adhesive now epdm foam is made of rubber it's not made of just plastic or the usual material used on foams. So moving on the middle of PCB and the plate, we have pour on sandwich foam. And then a layer of IXP switch pad right there. Underneath everything is a layer of PET anti-static film. Now upon checking the PCB, that's the stab right there. No screw in stab ports there. That confirms it, it is a flex cut PCB. I also took a peek of the PC plate here and it's also a flex cut PC plate about the gaskets. What we have here is made of silicone. Any questions, just let me know down below. Let's move on to the acoustic test. 